In the last video, I showed you how you could use deployment options to mark a new vertical as being a worker vertical and being able to run with multiple instances so that you can take advantage of multi-core processors and get more work out of a single piece of code. I'm going to show you another way today how you can scale your Vertex applications. So in this instance, we're going to remove the deployment options and the associated dependencies and we're going to change how we deploy the vertical back to our original methodology which is to just call new hello vertical and the other thing we're going to do is we're going to make it so that we can run multiple instances of this application now in order to do that on a single machine we're going to have to be able to modify what port it listens on. Only one process can listen on a one port at a given time. So what we need to do is be able to accept like a system property. And the way we can do that really quickly in Java is to say int HTTP port. Oh, actually, let's put that outside of the try catch block. And we'll say HTTP port equals integer dot parse int system dot get property and the key is HTTP dot port and the default will be port 8080 and we will catch a number format exception And if the number format exception is caught, we'll just default back to port 8080. At this point, we can now use this HTTP port value in place of the hard-coded value. And when we start up the application, we can pass a property to the application to tell it which port to listen on instead. Now, Vertex, at a very low level, has this capability to cluster instances of Vertex applications and this is done using a cluster manager. So for this demonstration I'm going to show you how to add a cluster manager. In this case we're going to use InfiniSpan. Uh, InfiniSpan by default will discover other Vertex nodes on the same local network segment using a process known as multicast DNS. Now, to be sure that we can tell which instance we're talking to, I'm going to add a little extra to this hello vertical. So I'm going to define a string called vertical ID. And every time we instantiate this hello vertical, we'll create a new UUID randomly and store it in that string. Then down here in our response, we can say hello from name and vertical ID. That's the only changes I've made, is I added one new dependency, and I made the code do a couple of extra things to support running multiple instances at the same time and make it obvious that we can tell the difference. But other than that, all I really need to do is maven clean package the project. And in this instance, I'm going to say java-jar. The vertex maven plugin creates a runnable jar for us. We're going to pass dash cluster. And we're going to pass a couple of properties. One of those properties is to deal with the fact that my laptop has the capability of speaking Java I, or IP version 6. And we want to tell it to prefer IP version 4, which works more reliably for multicast DNS. So we're going to pass that parameter as a system property. And then the other thing we're going to do is set that HTTP port that we told it to look for and this instance, we're going to tell it to run on port 8090. So you'll see it start up 
this, some of these extra messages that you're seeing are related to the clustering, the Infinispan and J-Group's discovery. So I'm going to start another terminal, and I'm going to run that same command again. java-jar target vertex demo dash cluster dash d java net prefer ipv4 stack equal true dash d http port equals 8070 and so now we have two instances of our application running and if we look back at our first terminal we see that infinispan has discovered the other instance so you'll see my host name here and the process ID here and so if we go back to our web application and I hit refresh up uh, port 80 90 we'll see a UUID but if I hit refresh again and keep hitting refresh we see two different UUIDs this is because the clustered application is distributing that work via the event bus through the clustering to multiple instances of this application. So if we switch back over here and add a third instance, java jar target rex demo cluster dash d java net prefer ipv4 stack equals true. This time I'm going to let it use the default port 8080. And again, we should see on both of the other instances that we had a new node join the cluster. And if we start refreshing, we will now see three different UUIDs cycling through. This works whether you're on the same local machine or as long as you're on the same local segment that doesn't have any kind of firewall or filtering in between. So let's say you have 20 servers all on the same local network segment and you spin up Vertex application instances, the event bus will cluster and you can distribute workloads across all of those nodes with nothing more than just adding that dependency and those two command line options. As we go forward, I'll show you other ways we can cluster and using cluster managers in Vertex, and some of them even apply to cloud providers like Amazon or Google, and some of them apply to Kubernetes or OpenShift. I look forward to showing you my next session in the very near future.